Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, I hope to bring the Vern lander to the surface of the moon, but uh, we've got a lot to do, and a lot has changed since I tried to launch this lander to the moon. Uh, before, we were working under the previous version of Real Solar System, and that had the launch center at the equator. And so now we're launching out of Cape Canaveral, which is a change from the last time I tried this. And also, uh, antennas have changed, right? Because uh, I readjusted the range to have a range multiplier of 1. And so I don't know if this antenna still has the same, same abilities. Oh wow, that's actually more than enough, isn't it? Okay, well, look, uh, but uh, energy requirements? Uh, let's separate the stage, because, okay, well, the drain is a little bit of a problem, isn't it? Because this one uh, has an en energy requirement of 0.93 charge per second, which is way too much. So, and uh, that's not the sum total of our problems, but uh, let's start with that. I want to add one of the, is the no, these two have the same model, and they're different. I need to get the right one. So we need one of these to talk with the satellites that we just put into place around the, around the moon. And then the top antenna. Let me see now. What should we have for that? This will do, and this has a nice small energy requirement of uh, 0.03 much better. Uh-oh. No, I want you there. Point oh three. But it doesn't really look right at the top, I think. Let's see. Or maybe I can put it on the side here. Looks a little bit weird. Uh, how heavy is it? Point oh three five might be a little bit unbalancing. We've got this light on this side and this... Why do we have two barometers? As if that's going to be a helpful thing. The Creatron is now completely useless, isn't it? I mean, there's just nothing... No reason why I should carry a Creatron with me ever. <laughs> just this... I, I always... Uh, whereas the Creatrons used to be the go-to antenna, now this one is. So... Okay. But yeah, um, all right. Well, first things, we'll we'll try putting that antenna on this side. Maybe I'll put this antenna on the other side, in the hope that there is some sort of balance here. Okay. Well, that's a start. Now, fuel and whether we can actually make a landing. Obviously there's no other rockets on this stage anymore, but shall we put some? It's an interesting question. Uh, okay, well this staging is very wrong. Now, I've gotten some recommendations and some thoughts about how to deal with the other problem on the third stage. And one of them was, in the previous episode, thinking about the one kilonewton thrusters, using them to do it. Uh, so that's a possibility. But I just noticed also that we've still got the WAC Corporal Sustainer rocket at the bottom of this, and we need to remove that, because that's not appropriate anymore. And we need to replace it with some of these. Which means also replacing the fuel and seeing whether this thing still has the efficiency to land on the moon. This will provide about the same amount of power. Let's just make sure everything looks right. Yeah. But we need to check the delta V. So remove all tanks. Oh, by the way, I know there's a new version of uh, Real Solar System, but because this installation is hanging by a thread, I'm not going to upgrade just yet. Oh, actually, this is better than the better than the Corporal Sustainers. Okay, 
So, that's actually an improvement. Uh, well, somewhat an improvement. Our thrust to weight ratio is uh, very, very tight, but um, should be good enough. Should be good enough for the moon. Uh, we might have to raise these a little bit so that the staging fits. Uh, this is a decoupler, so we do technically attach it directly, but it won't fit right now. Alright, so we've got another another decoupler there. And that'll help. And maybe just a little bit of struts to support things. So, now we've got MMH N204 in here for the lander. And maybe just a little bit of it in here would be a good idea. Let's see, uh, 7,700 down here. So let's say 2,000 of this becomes transit. Hmm. Well, let me get the struts while I'm thinking about this. Is there anything else about the lander that I'm forgetting? We've got the antennae. We've got a little reaction wheel in there. Don't really have any RCS. What is in here? Well, we've got a hydrazine. Do we have RCS ports somewhere? Huh. So I have the hydrazine, but not RCS ports. Maybe that is a thing we need to fix. And so I'm not going to use symmetry on them because they're in somewhat odd locations. Okay, so RCS ports. I could change it from Hydrazine to to um, MMHN204, I suppose, but that wouldn't work with these ports. I'd have to use these, and these are more powerful. So no need to go there. Actually, I could probably make uh, better tanks now, I think. But anyway, let's not toy with that. The probe itself should probably be kept intact. Okay. Let me just seal that up. So Nathan Kell suggested just putting solid rocket boosters on the bottom. And maybe instead of filling the tank with uh, with the MMHN204, or at least part of the tank with it, maybe just using these uh, these rockets will be better. And we'll keep them inside the fairing so that they're shielded. I have been playing with uh, procedural parts as well in a different install and the new solar system. So I've, I've experienced the new solar system, the real solar system, and, uh, and also procedural parts. So when I decide it is time to do such things, I will be ready. But not in this install, I don't think. Okay, well. I hope it works with it uh, somewhat sticking into the... I mean, it should. Not too sure, just two relights will be enough, but we'll go with that for now. Okay, I don't anticipate tweaking the stages. We're a little bit tight on things. A little bit tight. But we're not trying to return this lander, so that's that's the good thing. Alright, uh, it's been a while since I tried this. Maybe I should just try it out. See if everything will work out right. Alright, uh, let's save this new version. And head out to Launchpad. Okay, that's close enough. So I've got the relative inclination close to zero, but not quite. We could use some room, and that's what we've got. And and it happens to be daylight, though very cloudy day. Look, a white sky. So that's interesting. Haven't seen that before yet. And so there's an interesting day to launch. Um, if 
Throttle is up, SAS is on. All systems look nominal after the after the time warp to get the inclination right. Alright, so uh okay, well, let's do our traditional staging. There we go. And we're off. So, how painful do you suppose it'll be to try and land a lunar lander with a time delay? I think it's going to be pretty bad. <laughs> But first things first. Okay. So the loud solid rocket boosters. Great sound, but uh, still quite loud. Um, are now off. Okay, trying to get above the overcast here. And actually, uh, there probably is a overcast at Cape Canaveral today. I do realize that I have reached 1,000 subscribers, and while subscriber count isn't exactly the number I keep track of much, I'm actually much more interested in likes specifically, even more than views, because it tells me who's actually enjoying my videos. <laughs> um, but, uh, well, I mean, uh, I think I will do, I have planned, I'm trying to, trying certain things out uh, regarding Mars. Uh, and if I can put a video together, I will do so. So yeah, possible 1,000 subscriber special. I, I wanted to do a special at some point soon anyway. I get specialish ideas and and just try and find an occasion to actually put a video up okay getting rates for first stage out okay first stage cutoff separation and light. Do need separation rockets, though I, I haven't checked out whether sticking separatrons on the side is okay with uh, Ferrum Aerospace, so... I don't want those just falling off. Okay, I think it's uh, fairing time. I hope this works out right. Uh, as normal. And I think we can extend our extensible antenna. Obviously, I can't... I mean, I guess I could slip... Uh, well, if I tried to put solid rockets on the bottom of it, it might damage the payload. And obviously putting them on the side is no longer okay with Ferrum Aerospace. So, I'm not entirely sure how to separate... Well, I, I'm sure I could figure out some way, but... Uh, right now, I'm, it's not priority to figure out how to separate the nose cone properly. Eventually it'll float off as it does. It's been a smooth ride with the Forsetti so far as we are coming close to second stage burnout.
And there it is. Second stage separation and light of the third stage. Okay, all is good. Our time to apple absence is fine. We should have more than ample time to get this close to circular. Relative inclination is holding steady at around 0.26. The Forsetti has been quite a nice, consistent workhorse for us. So that's nice to see. Always good when you've developed a launcher that doesn't give you sudden strange happenings. It's also nice to see the solid boosters still actually attached to all this. Of course, uh, the problem in previous flights is them falling off, but now they are shielded in the fairing. The only concern is that uh, they somehow act like incendiary devices and explode this fuel tank or something. But uh, no, let's 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 hope that does not happen. So I'm anticipating one relight with this rocket to do the lunar transit, and another relight at the other side in order to get into lunar orbit. Since our inclination is minimal, I'm not anticipating a significant mid-course plane change. Okay, here it goes. All right, 282, 279. Very good and we are in orbit so relative inclination 0.26 don't need that anymore and yeah I think we have enough fuel to do both the lunar transit as well as getting into orbit around the moon so I'm going to plot my path to the moon and I'll be back with you once I have done so okay I've got a good pattern here but it's a little bit finicky so the fact that uh, the third stage is either on or off might cause a little bit of a problem. But 176 kilometers as the periapsis will be our goal. And perhaps just to do things a little bit more accurately than I normally do, I'll have smart ASS take us to the maneuver node and hold us there. And then we'll time warp to the node, which is in about 18 minutes. Burn time should be, well, let's call it at least two-thirds of the remaining stage. More than that, really. So probably around four and a half minutes, I should expect. Signal delay is not substantial at this point, so just gonna do it without the flight computer this time. Well, should I trust flight computer? <laughs> uh, it's tough to say. Why are we not generating anything? Well, I guess, oh yes, our, our tail is pointing directly at the sun, so the panels on this may should have put some better solar panels but once we get to the moon the panels should be pointing upward as we land so in that case they will be getting sunlight since I'm definitely gonna be landing in the daytime oh all right I'll try flight computer eventually I'm going to on the landing I don't think I can program a landing as such so there I'll have to do it on my own. And yes, I know that uh, any problem I have with flight computer is completely my own fault, but um, still. Oh, it does have the wiggle sometimes. Uh, even though the craft is stable, it tends to wiggle out. But I don't think that was a problem with this craft. 
Though it seems to be rotating it for some unspecified reason. Okay. Let's go ahead. Oh, we're past where I wanted to be. Still very stable. Alright, uh, go ahead and try it out. It says 6 minutes and 41 seconds. I don't think that's reasonable, is it? Uh, not what I wanted, actually. This says the stage time is only 6 minutes and 2 seconds. And it has more than enough delta V, so I'm not entirely sure what's up with this estimated burn. But this estimated burn cannot possibly be right. Okay, coming up on crunch time here. Let's see how Flight Computer does. I wonder if I should be prepared to kill it early. We'll see. I'll have my cursor over the relevant controls if necessary, but I'm not going to pre-program anything in. So far it's been pointing directly at the node. few more seconds. Okay, it thinks it's done it. Let's find out. Uh, okay, whoa. <laughs> no, no it hasn't. Not even close. What is with this flight computer? I programmed it for this burn. Okay, well... We need to figure this out before. Okay, I don't really don't trust it at all. But yeah, I mean, I programmed it for the right burn, and it didn't do the right burn at all. What is with this thing? Okay, well that's close enough for me. So, well, as expected, about 15.3 meters per second off. Uh, let's have MacJeb point it. No, I, I shouldn't have it point out the node because once the node starts drifting off, Mechchip will have a have a cow. So let's make sure very stable. And a little bit off, but better than flight computer did. Okay. Um let's have Okay, SAS doesn't want to Did I leave no, this is off. Oh, uh, this one. Stop doing stuff. Ah, there we go. So yeah, inefficient though it might be, I'm going to use the hydrazine to correct this periapsis, or at least bring us closer. So for some reason, the hydrazine, the RCS seems to be working fine this time, though it's, it's been profligate whenever I try and use the MMH N204 version. Of course, that was with the larger thruster blocks, I think. But... I forget if that was in this series or in a different... No, it must have been in this series, right? Yeah. Okay. I think that's good enough for the moon periapsis. Can't really orient properly. Well, I guess we could at least do one thing, which is make sure we're pointing in a good direction for sunlight, which is perhaps positive normal would be good. Just want to make sure that the electricity generation is greater than the drain. Though 10 days is more than enough time. Okay, there we go. 
Oh, suddenly... Oh, I guess we're on the dark side temporarily. Hopefully this will be okay soon. Yes? Yes. Oh, uh... We should establish some communication link. Now... Theory was, and we gotta check it out now, that I could set target to Kerbin and I'll just connect to anything that's available. Uh, the electricity drain is a little bit much, but first, this doesn't take any charge, but we definitely can deactivate that now. Um, don't think there's anything else to deactivate on this. So we'll just have to make sure that we're turned a little bit better for sunlight purposes. Hmm, that's not really helping. Anyway, so I'm gonna see whether this dish can communicate with both of the space centers as we transit. Even if we lose connection on transit, we're going to, once we get there, be able to communicate with the existing satellites around the moon using this antenna. And so that's the plan. Of course it would be nice if we don't have to just rely on that, but... Well, let's see. I don't really fully understand the cone angle stuff with uh, remote tech because I haven't played around with it. And so this is my first attempt to play around with it, and we will see. Okay, so I think we've gotten to that point. I think, uh, yeah, our altitude is definitely out of range of the normal antenna, and so all it's doing is as long as I point, tell it to point at Kerbin, it's fine with connecting to anything that happens to be available. And right now, of course, the obvious target being Mission Control or Pratchett Station or something like that. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so uh, here we are, and we are in the Moon's sphere of influence with a periapsis of one. 44 kilometers. Going to just... Now the whole point of the constellation around the moon is to allow me to do the burn on the side that is not facing Kerbin. So if my satellite constellation is doing what it's supposed to do, then we now have the capability of doing our maneuvers even on the side not facing Kerbin, so we'll test that out. I'm gonna aim at the maneuver node. We have more than enough delta V for this, so we'll get it nice and tight. Not that tight. There are uh, there are interesting elevations on the moon. I know. That should be good enough. And speaking of which, I need to change my custom info window. Uh, my custom info window has above sea level altitude, and I would rather it not. This. If ever there was a time to have the true altitude, it is now. Okay. So we're pointing, well, we're getting to the node here. 19 hours. Electric charge is not a problem. fuel stability still very stable so that's not a problem the fact that these sometimes 
come up when I don't want them to is somewhat of a problem. Okay, I think we're uh, good to get to periapsis. Okay, I have made a grievous error it looks like, because we have no connection right now. And I don't know. Should be able to connect to these guys that we set in orbit previously. But that's not happening. And I seem to have the cone like this, but I can't communicate. Oh, is it because... Uh, oh, it might be because uh, mission control is on the opposite side. So no connection right now, but uh, perhaps by the time we get to the other side of the moon. Okay, we're past our maneuver node, but we have no connection. This could be problematic. Okay, now we have a connection. A uh, four second delay is quite a long delay. And this maneuver node is no longer helpful. So it's going to cost us a bit more. On the bright side, this stage has plenty of room for that. And we'd rather do it on this stage than with the lander. Okay, I think that's as good as it's going to get. Flight computer, which can't do the burns the way I want it to, but four second delay is a little bit too much for me to try anything else. So witness, I'm typing in the number properly. I'm telling it to point at the blasted maneuver node. And no, I'm not going to do that. And if I can see anything, I'm going to check the fuel status. Very stable. So everything is nominal for the burn. And we are pointing at the maneuver node. So here goes nothing. Four second delay. Okay. Cross your fingers. Okay, still a mysterious 0.7 meters per second off, but better than the translunar injection. Okay, this is good enough. A four second delay though. Now let's see what part of our orbit we have a minimal delay. How about that? There's got to be a point where I'm, I'm okay, right? Or at least I've got uh, the minimal for the moon. Do I always have to? Ah, there we go. So, so like right now. <laughs> um, how, how, our orbital period is two hours. I think if we take a look, I think mission control will still be on our side in two hours. So... So I guess we will uh, we will aim for the bright side. Obviously, this looks like a wonderful territory to hit. I think it has 
it's time to separate the the third stage. I've pressed the button and it separates. Okay, good. Very nice. And land the gear. Good. And let's activate the thrusters on this. Okay, very convincing. Now. So, maybe it's not, maybe it's not mission, con uh, this, uh, this controller, fight computer. Uh, maybe it's just maybe it's just KSP because here I've got a maneuver that's 15.7 meters per second and here it tells me it's 22.7 okay explain that one to me now right uh, pointing in this direction isn't particularly good for our electric charge but we'll be all the way around and add our maneuver node before the the charge runs out so let's just go with it so the problem we had before was clearly the fact that the all the things we can communicate with were on the opposite side of the planet but now we do not have that problem and we're going to make a landing hopefully Now I'm going to have to try and get the rhythm of the time delay right. Let's see if I can do that. Signal delay. I really shouldn't say time delay. That's a little bit weird. Very sci-fi, but not quite the same. Okay. I've throttled up a bit. And that did not work out. Okay, so numerous possibilities present themselves. Fuel flow un really? Oh, nuts. <laughs> oh. So these were not service module tanks. Yay! Okay, all right, all right. So, so we got all the way here, but these are not service module tanks. We have learned something, <laughs> and I guess I'll have to try this again in the next episode. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, right, so next episode, I'm going to replace these tanks with service module tanks. I probably won't show that uh, on video. I'll just verify that at the beginning of the next episode and then we'll try this again. I really wish I could get some practice in for a lunar landing on this delay though, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. I somewhat expected that this one would fail, but I expected it to fail because of my landing attempt, not because of this. Oh, Alright. So. Once more, we will try to send this little probe to the moon. The, everything else worked fine. So, just pressurize the tanks, use the service module tanks, and then next episode, we will once again try to land on the moon. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.